Open the Town of Rutland Planning Board meeting of April 9th, 2024. Our first item on the agenda is the minutes of March 26th. Make a motion to accept the minutes of March 26th. Second. Second. Oh, yeah. No, good. Tim, you. No, Keith, you take it. All right. Second. Is there any discussion? Any comments, questions, changes, additions, deletions? That looked all right. Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Way to do that, Britain. Yes, sir. I can abstain. Yeah, abstain. Correct. Uh, next item a public hearing, consider amendments to Article 3, Section. 8B51, Article 3, Section 10B1, and Article 9, Section 64A to amend the text to be considered with previously approved amendments. <coughs> uh, we have, I believe. And through the chair norm? Yep. That first one, we got to get rid of the and side and change it to an 8. Yeah. It says, it says and 8 a.m. to 7 p.m. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I saw that and I, I corrected it when I did the morant. Oh, okay. Thank you. I caught that one. So <laughs> the, the packet online. So, Norm, you had, you had asked me on the phone yesterday about the corrections. Do you have any other questions or are you all set with those? So, uh, I don't. Okay. Anybody else? Any? Um, I was just curious where they, these are from, these are just the planning board's request to change or? Yes. No, uh, what happened, Tim, was when I first started, um, Peter and Anita, I guess, were working together to implement previously approved um, zoning bylaw amendments and make sure they ended up in the zoning bylaws. When they did that, these were three minor um, things that somehow didn't make it into the new zoning bylaw amendments. So Anita went through them, and these uh, um, I went through them, Peter went through them, we all went through them. And these were three um, previously approved amendments or part of previous amendments that somehow didn't make it into the new bylaws. So this is a housekeeping article to, um, to clean that up and make sure uh, everything that was previously approved ends up in the zoning bylaws as it was approved at previous town meeting. Thank you. Norm, do we need a motion to send this to the to the select board? Uh, no, we need we would need a motion, Tim, to recommend favorable action at town meeting on this article. So moved. No. So you have to close the hearing. No, oh, okay. Hearing first. Any questions, comments? Oh, sorry. Nope. Yes, uh, major home occupancy. Uh, why? Why is the town of Rutland, the, you know, building bylaw of the town of Rutland? Why is that scratched out and mass date put in? Again, Dick, these were these were approved at a previous town meeting. They've already been approved. It just for some reason they weren't changed in the in the new version of the zoning bylaws because. Um, I would suppose, again, I don't want to speak for Dave. I wasn't part of these amendments, but this is accurately what has already been approved at town meeting. So that was, I guess, updated language to he was reflect uh, current practice. Yeah. Dick, I remember this one with the Mass State Building yeah. Code. Yeah, Rutland uses a Mass State Building Code. Exactly. Why? Why doesn't Rutland have to, why can't it still be there? Why can't. does it have to say Mass? Why, I thought Home Rule ruled. Yeah. The, the state think building. about that, though. It's major home occupation. I know math oh, okay. and all that. But to me, for crying out loud, it, you know. I'm not sure if Rutland has buildings by us. They don't. No, I don't think we do. There is no. Everything is by the state building code. Yeah. There isn't. There is no. not. The building inspector uses the state building code. That's the bare minimum. Right. You can get more restrictive if you choose, but the building code is no, the bare minimum. You have to follow the building code. You can get more restrictive over the building code. You if have you to follow the building code unless you go to the legislature and have yeah. it changed. Mm. In fact, when I saw the 
Dick, when I saw the language that said building bylaws of the town of Rutland, I was really confused because in my 25 years, I've never seen a town have their own have their own building bylaws. It's always gone by the uh, the state building code. <laughs> um, may I make a recommendation that they go back through all the town reports from day one and find out if it's been changed? I'm Would that be a zoning bylaw? I am starting to feel that there are a lot of things that this town overlooks that has been voted on a long time ago. I mean, certainly, Dick, I mean, we can, you know, myself and Anita, we can go through past bylaw amendments that were approved at town meeting to make sure that everything ended up accurately in the zoning bylaws. I guess that's what you're asking? Correct. Yes. Yeah, we can certainly do that, Dick, to see if there are other housekeeping articles that are necessary at future at future town meetings. I would think that it would be in the record of a town meeting that Rutland adopted the Mass yeah. State Building Code. Oh, would. would have been a while ago, of course. Yes. Probably, probably, yes. But like everything else, it gets, mm -hmm. it disappears. It gets forgotten. Yes. Okay, any other questions, comments, or anything else? Anything for the public on this one? Okay, uh, here, nothing, no, nothing, a motion to close the hearing. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, so, Norm, was that vote 500? Because I can't see Tim yes. or Britton. Yes. Uh, it's 500? Okay, thank you. Correct. Um, so, next would be a motion to make a favorable recommendation. So, so moved. Second. Any discussion on this one? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Yeah. Five zero. Okay, next public hearing. We now have a public hearing to consider an amendment to the zoning map of the town of Rutland to change the zoning designation of the property known as 184 Maple Ave, also known as parcel ID 037826, as shown on the most recent zoning map, from Resident 60 to Town Center 2. Uh... And yes, thank you for uh, thank you for having me. I move the petition forward. This is as it reads to change that parcel from residential 60 to town center two. This is the parcel just south of uh, Countryside Estates. It's um, it's got about 300 feet of frontage on Maple Ave, and we are we're looking to basically extend that that zoning further south so it's it's a continuation of the town center two zoning which is the the newer zoning district that the town created which carries through most of maple ave and we're looking to extend that down and i'll correct that it's not continued because lot 25 is not considered a tc2 district right it's it's a continuation of the non-residential i guess correct. zoning. yeah yep yep to how far? We're looking Only to, to your lot or beyond? No, 26. It just includes the one parcel. So it's, yeah, lot 26. And I gotta ask if that's, that's all you got marked you in game of? Oh, that's all I have, yep. What's the intent of that lot to use for TC2? Uh, we don't have a, we don't have a defined use at this time. It just, it would open up some different possibilities. Okay. I guess from the board's perspective, um, again, this is my opinion. I've looked over um, the TC2 district, and from a residential standpoint, it gives a lot of more freedom, reduced frontage, reduced acreage, all of that. So I'm okay with that. The, the, the problem I have is I don't, and I've been thinking about this over this entire discussion, is I don't want to give that whole parcel TC2. I want it to be equal to what the other TC2 districts are, which, and I apologize, I think it, I don't have it in front of me because I didn't bring it with me, but I think it's 300 feet deep. 
I'm trying to get that right now to make sure I... I sent it to you two guys, but I couldn't... I'm trying to find the email I sent you that's got the PDF because I explicitly broke out that PDF. So, 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 Tim, could I piggyback on your point about the frontage and the setbacks? Yep. Um, people need to be aware of that if this uh, parcel is rezoned from residential to CT, uh, TC2, rather... Um, not only is there a minimum front yard setback, but there's a maximum front yard setback to ensure that um, the, whatever uses go in there, whatever structures are a little bit closer to the road and that the parking is to the side or rear of the building. So um, I thought people should know that it's it's it's, it's the only it's the only district in town that has a maximum front yard setback to kind of create that town center feel for commercial for residential. It doesn't have that. It just has reduced, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, let me hold on. Let me open that up, Tim. I have my zoning bylaws right here. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to get to. <laughs> yeah, let me let me check on that. Hold on. There it is. Sent. No, actually, I think it's across the board, Tim. I've got the table open right now, and. I think the I think the ma maximum minimum. Hold on a sec. So it says maximum front setback number four. No, it doesn't differentiate for everything. All right, I thought. Huh. Yeah. All right, I thought. But the, the planning board may authorize a greater setback due to topographic constraints to facilitate a consistent village design or minimize impacts on surrounding properties. So you're right, Tim, you can authorize a larger setback. So um, Mr. Elbag, if he were to get this rezoning, come forward with the project, there is some flexibility there at the board's discretion. Okay, good, thanks. If we're gonna move it. Yeah, no, a full lot. I, I will say if you, if you don't move it as a full lot, it makes it a little more difficult. And I guess my, my case to keep it the full lot is that it's not that big of a piece of land, so it's likely not going to be divided. I think even if it were town center two and we wanted to divide it, I think the most we could get was would be two residential lots. So I guess my, my case is if we split the zoning on the lot, it's really just only going to make confusion and you know it won't really have an impact on the development per se. And I, I would have to agree with Mr. Elbag. Um, if you split the zone on that, if you split zoning on that lot, I know it's consistent with the DC <laughs> zoning district, but um, it gives the board a little bit less flexibility to work with the applicant on the location of that building because it wouldn't be all zoned town center. Well, and it, and it would match the width of the commercial zone to the north at Countryside Estates. Yeah. The only reason I, again, I'm just trying to be fair to other, because we've got other properties in TC1 that, you know, we did a third of their property mm -hmm. as in the TC district and two thirds outside it. So I'm just, all I'm trying to do is be fair to the other people that have, that have to live with this. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm not saying I don't disagree with it. I just want, to, want the board to be aware that. If we're going to be fair about the TC, we should do it across the board and not spot. That's all I'm bringing up. I'll, I'll live with the board's decision. I just wanted to uh, bring that up. It's just, I think when, when we created these yeah. TC districts, uh, it, it would have been extremely complicated to try to describe if we did nothing but complete yeah. lots. So instead we simply decided to choose a distance from the right of way correct of, of the road uh, for the whole distance. Um, and I realize we did definitely create some split lots uh, but I don't know. I don't think I'd be particularly in favor of creating another split lot here. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, seems like a lot of houses would already are already established along this area too. So yeah. it's not like you're gonna unless people want to build behind there. I do find it kind of interesting that all of these lots below that 
27, 28, 29, 32. It's all a straight line. Yeah, I noticed that, Norm. That's, so, so, Norm, to, to add to your point, um, if the if the if this rezoning were to happen and Mr. Albag would come back would come forward before the board with some kind of development, the board has the right to work with the applicant on establishing some kind of buffer um, to the rear of the property against that residential zoning district. So, if it's not a split zone lot, if it is the entire lot, then the board has the flexibility to work with the applicant on creating a design that will work for that area to protect those residential homeowners to the rear. To, I got to ask a question, and John, you're going to be the best one to answer it. Is I don't think we do under 10, let me get to B. 10B says the residential is by right without site plan approval under residential uses. If you go to 10B, section B, it says mm -hmm. residential use. Recognize the town center's tradition included a mix of uses. Planning what, board upon what page Tim. Uh, page twenty one. Okay, thank you, John. The by right does. Uh, there is residential by right, but in the dimension. Yes. If you go by the dimension table, that's what I referred to earlier. If we went with by right residential and not a site plan, the by right residential would just be two lots. So the, I don't know that the zoning split would necessarily impact that. The buy, right. the buy right definition of this would be <coughs> two single family house lots. Mm. Which is, isn't our intent. Um, I just, the, the reason for the board, Norma, is bringing this up is well, the reduction, you know, with 20,000 square foot lots. Oh, so that means 20,000, that's a half acre, correct? Yeah, but mm -hmm. plus or minus. The limiting factor, Tim, would be the frontage. Yeah, yeah, I was seeing that with 125 feet. Since you've only got 300, right. that puts you to and, two. And Tim, to play devil's advocate in this case, if Mr. Elbag wanted to do one or two family, he could have just done it by right with the current zoning. Correct, yeah. So, But what about... Um, let me ask, um, I'll be devil's advocate. What about putting in a duplex uh, group like uh, Jimmy did up in the TC1, TC2 district? How does that play out in this? Well, that would be, under, I, that would fall into, um, it would be duplexes, but with the number of units, it would most likely be considered multifamily. Yep. Right. Which would be a special permit, I believe. I don't, is it? I no. thought under, I yeah. thought multifamily and single family was grouped under residential, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, not mo no, single and two family are allowed by right, but I believe multifamily needs a special permit. Yeah, I think that's right, or at least a site plan review. One of the two. It says single and two family dwellings are allowed by right, and and that's correct. The, that's the two lot so, scenario. Hmm. Two family would be considered multifamily. Yeah, that's what I was getting at, Brendan. Yeah, so by right, yes, he could, and that that's what I wanted to make aware. So if can you do multiple? Uh, could do two groups of two, so four total. Okay. If I'm not misunderstanding the situation. Right. right. So, so let me clarify, so two Mark. Two total four units, four occupied units on this lot. Mark, you're looking to rezone this to TC2, correct? Correct. Yep. My apologies. I'm looking at the table. There is no maximum front yard setback. It's not applicable. Minimum is 15 feet. My apologies. I misspoke. <clears throat> it's actually, it's just to be exact, it's two, 260 ish feet of front. It's somewhere around 260. So it is less than 300. Okay, good enough. I'm, I just wanted to ask some questions and make sure I had everything mm -hmm. squared away. Yes, actually, here, Tim, at the bottom of page 23. Yep, I'm getting as, there. As the intent of the town center district is to provide a mix of residential and non-residential uses, the planning board may approve multifamily residential uses, three or more dwelling units by special permit. Okay. Where units are in addition to business uses proposed on the site or where they complement existing non-residential uses in the district. So there are some stipulations to that. Okay. <clears throat> Thanks. I missed that one. I missed the section... The, the second page of section four. So we've got, so that's under, 
<laughs> how much is how many trees are left all the way in the back? Is it half the lots empty, or is it just visually when you? Right now, most of the lots wooded. Probably at least seventy five percent. Okay, there was an existing house there that's been. Yeah, demolished. I yeah. gotta ask you more. What is that square piece of brick? Was that a fireplace, a chimney? I'm just curious. Uh, might be the Don't old tell well. me it's a cistern because I was going to... Well, it might be the old well. Okay, it was. I I asked this guy and he goes, no, they wouldn't use... Or I said, no, they wouldn't use brick, but yeah. Yeah, it might be the old well. That must, that's been the early 20s and 30s. Mm. Okay, thanks. I just curiosity. Because yeah. I drove by to take a look at it. You're right. <laughs> the one the front is... Uh, that's the only thing left and then there's just a little up there and then the rest is all wooded all the way back. I thought the um, the town center district was an overlay district. I thought that, that so when we voted that everything changed. Excuse me, could you, sir, could you please that? introduce yourself? Hey, Tommy, name right. Yeah, we know him. <laughs> um, Poor John. Okay, so I thought that you still could do whatever was zoned here before, but this was an addition to that. And I just then I just want to make a comment. What Tim said earlier, I I remember voting because I have a lot that the same thing. The three hundred mm -hmm. feet divides my one of my lots in two different ways. Yeah. And I specifically asked for that. I said, well, it doesn't make sense to have a lot that is partially one thing and partially something else. And it was opted not to change any of those. Mm -hmm. And I remember Addison was on the board at the time and specifically said, because I asked several, you guys walked down the street with me of looking at those lots. And and uh, you didn't make any exceptions for a lot line that was 15, 20 feet away from where the 300 foot came. Well, I, I'm not sure that's the right number, but a short distance that way or a short distance the other way from the Main Street d dimension and from the Maple Ave dimension. Mm -hmm. Through the chair, nor if I'm not mistaken, the residential use of the TC for residential, you know, from the lot, you know, like behind you, like R40 behind you, or part of your property, that didn't, the TC was an enhancement adding the ability to do business in other mm -hmm. portions. Yeah. So it wasn't taken away, Tommy, it was adding abilities of that's your existing. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. But it did, but we did set a certain, you know, 300 feet back is where the TC ops. And then from there, R40 takes over, which is the standard residential uh, design. Correct. That's so the, my understanding was it didn't take any of the other rights away. It just added to them in that, in those zones. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Right. It gave, uh, it gave other opportunities for those zones. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So it to to Mark's point, if he wanted to build a house, two houses on that 300 and divide it up by 150 and 150, he could do that. But he also has the opportunity to um, put uh, business there. Correct. Something else in that area if it was if it so was so past the town. I don't want to business get it. along with business and residential. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which you can't do in R40. Correct. So that's all the TC was adding to it. Right, all by special permit. All by best permit, correct. All by, by, special, right, permit. by special permit. Yeah, and all the other things that go with it, the parking, the um, uh, landscaping, all that stuff that's in the Offers. TC. Yep. Anything and, else? And John, to, to just to let you know, this is our former fire chief. So we all know him very well, Tom Rushala. What's your address again? Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm more concerned about people who may be in the audience or listening in, Dick, who, who don't know who these people are. So um, it's more for the public at large than for the board or my, or staff. It's more for the it's it's more for the people who may be viewing in who don't know who these people are, who don't have the history with them. Plus here, and we got to give name, rank, and it's true. name and address for to make it put down. Yes. Thank you. All right, I'm... I'm Any other questions, comments from anybody? I'm sorry, Mark. It's R60 where you're at. Yes. R60. Cuts off on the road that crosses. And... Okay. Hmm. I don't have any comments, questions. Um, you know, the lot's not that deep. I'd say, you know, for example, 13 is a little further up. 
you know, that thing goes real far into the woods. I mean, to, it's not the same situation, so I can see why, you know, you wouldn't want to just grant all the way to the back of the lot in some of these, and you mm -hmm. went with 300, but mm -hmm. um, I'm not opposed to a full full lot. Here. Which, you know, a any of the owners of those lots could certainly also petition the town. Correct. To yeah. have the remainder of their property included in the TC2. Yeah. Or TC1. True. Yeah. So they could come in, Norm, and ha ask as a, mm -hmm. I'm fine with that. Though. I'm good. All right. Are we all set? Yeah. So we're just voting on supporting it or, or a favorable action? Yeah, recommending favorable or unfavorable action. Yeah. After we close the hearing. Favorable. Right. I just want to make sure where we're yeah. going. Okay. This will, uh, What's that? Motion to close the hearing. Second hold, that. Hold on a second. Did we ask for any public? I did. Okay. Sorry. I didn't hear that. So I want to make sure. Yes, we did. We heard. I know. I guess I'll do motion to close the hearing. Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Um, I need a motion for an action. We could. We can make a motion for a recommendation. Uh, is that necessary at this meeting? Yes. Um, well, yeah, usually at the end of the public hearing, the board can do one of three, three things, either recommend favorable action, recommend unfavorable action, or the, I mean, the board doesn't have to vote support if it doesn't want to, I, didn't, I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing forcing you to vote some kind of action on the article. No. You could just simply let it go to town meeting and let the chips fall where they may, if you'd like. Have we done this in the past for the citizens petitions? That's what I'm trying to remember and I'm having a brain death. But the I, last I, one was over um, at honey, where the honey farms used to be when that was changed. Mm -hmm. Did we vote? I mean, I, I have no problem voting favorable. I just want to make sure that we're consistent. If Britton can pull it up quickly on his computer, I believe on the town clerk's page, yep. the warrant for last year's annual town meeting should be linked there, and you'd be able to see on the warrant if they recommended any action on that or not. I know that and, and, the select board and the finance committee do not usually make recommendations on citizens' petitions, but I believe the planning board has if it's related to a planning board matter, but I could be mistaken. It would have been yeah, I, think, you know, I, think I mean, this is zoning. It's under our review. Right. So I'm I'm fine with that. I just want to make sure we're consistent. That, that just, just depends on whether the moderator asks for our recommendation. Oh. There's no links. There's oh, no it link didn't to it. Yeah, it. Okay. That, that's like the only one that did. we don't have. Oh, so. no. Thank you for <laughs> checking. <Yeah. clears throat> well, let me ask a question, Norm. Mm -hmm. We typically have a meeting before the town meeting well we, we have another regular meeting before town yeah meeting. so should we just i mean mark I, i'm not i'm not like sorry. saying i just want to make sure i'm covered i mean Tim, uh, if I may, well, I with, say well gentlemen it, with the with the public hearing closed you can't accept any new testimony um i was just going to add that the select board is going to be uh signing the final warrant next tuesday april 16th so if you wanted something to be publicly in writing on the warrant, you'd have to make that decision tonight. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it would just be a verbal at town meeting. I think the town does look to the board for zoning. You know, it's certainly, that's why I brought it before the board, board early to get to get a rec recommendation from this board or I wasn't even going to move forward with it because I think it, I think it goes a long way with the town if the planning board is in favor. I'll defer to the more senior members of the board if this is where we, I, I just, I don't know if you've, if we jump, you know, if we put support on things like this or if we just, we and just I, leave it, let it, leave it up to the public to decipher whether or not they want to make that vote or if we endorse it or we deny it. Well, we, the, only thing, the only thing I can say is I know I have never stood up and said that we make no recommendation. Okay. Right, that, that's that's the only thing I do know, but. 2022. What about November 2022? Because I think that's the one when they did the I have um, minutes. marijuana. I have minutes. Oh, but I don't have a the, warrant. Check the minutes. It would be probably the last warrant article. And I believe that was for the marijuana facility down at... Um, Can I just say your, your memory is incredible? I don't know to the marijuana facility. <laughs> no, I'm speak. sorry. No, I just want to see if they made a <laughs> recommendation go, or maybe not. Maybe we can use a different example on that one. Sorry. It's Tamika, the only one I think what, that's what was, linked. What was the date of that town meeting? 
It would have been, I think, November but 18th the, or something. The other thing, too, is I think Mass General Law. Damn it, Dan, I have anything here. Oh, yeah. Points is only changed to the planning board for this reason. Right, yes. but on the form on the form seven that goes to the attorney general's office, under re, under report of the planning board to town meeting, it has three different options: either written report, oral report, or neither. So the planning board doesn't have to give a report to town meeting if it doesn't want to. That's the only thing. The only persons. The only board that commented on was finance committee, and they had no recommend. They had no action. What, yeah, which usually they do on citizens' petitions. I don't see anything for the planning board. Okay. Act, whether favorable or unfavorable. Yeah, I'm looking at. Uh, oh, you know what? I have an old one here. I think. Here's Article 27, <coughs> from, the night from November, from 2019, citizens' petition, uh, zoning amendment. Um, uh, let's see uh, to replace section blah blah incorporate. I think this is the one that. Uh, um, there's no the only thing that's recommended in there is the finance recommended favorably for the CIS petition on the zoning amendment. Planning board's not even in here on that. I'm looking at the November 19th. I just I wanted to make sure. And there's is there another citizens petition? There's another citizens <laughs> petition that's in here. But I don't believe there's anything in MGL that precludes you from making a recommendation if you. No, there's not. No. No, oh, and I'm, I'm, I'm just. Hmm. I don't have a problem. Just want to make sure. Mass General Law does not differentiate between um, zoning bylaw amendments that are citizens' petition versus those that are brought far, forward by a, a municipal board. I don't see one where the plan so far. I'm planning. Written, I'm the same way. All I see is finance committee recommending. There are planning it. board ones, but therefore they're not for citizens' petitions. Correct. I just don't want to. Yeah, I don't mind. It, I don't mind doing it. Just a precedent yeah. that I'm trying mm -hmm. to stay away from. Right. Well, Tim, the, Tim, these are case by case basis. So I would argue there's no so, there's no setting a precedent on these things. Each bylaw amendment is its own thing. Then why wouldn't somebody come back and say, why did you do it on the previous ones? Well, the situation may be different. The neighborhood may be different. The scope of the rezoning or the nature of the bylaw amendment may be totally different. Like I said, when I was in Rentham, um, a citizen's petition came forward a year and a half after the town just adopted some pretty strict um, standards for drive through facilities. And a citizen petition article came in to slash those requirements in half, lot size, queuing distance, everything. And the planning board said, absolutely not, because this flies in the face of what we just passed a year and a half ago. So, again, it depends on the situation. Yeah, but the one I'm reading in 2019 has to do with the village center district, which is what we're talking about here, except it's TC. It's TC. So that's the reason why I'm just... I, I, have, I have one here. The planning board the planning board favored the zoning change. For a citizen's mark? Yep. Uh, this one is February 18th, 1992, uh, from Mr. <laughs> Mr. Johnson. There was no opposition at the hearing at the planning board held and that the planning board voted or the planning board favored the zoning change unanimously passed. I might have another one in here. It sounds about half of the courts. Mm. But this is, a, actually, this is a, an attest true copy from the clerk. Okay. I mean, again, I don't have a problem. Sure. Come on. If you're anything, be consistent. So Yeah. That's yeah. What, uh, yeah. But, I know each each but, but I mean, each in, case in, in, is, in, yeah I know that each in, in case all, is its own case but in, in we makes, have to be consistent and that makes but, but in all, in all, in all fairness, fairness gentlemen in all fairness that was 1992 I was in college at the time so well that's for the case not it, it, there hasn't been a lot of zoning changes since so it's or um, no, I'm at the door the back it might add some uh, uh, citizens petition yep. Uh, Peter Crane Nate's way. It is my recollection from all the town meetings I have recorded that planning board 
generally has a recommendation of some kind, irrespective of whether it makes it to the minutes. But the only way I can prove that is to go through all the recordings. <laughs> was that, and that was for okay. citizens' petition specifically? Absolutely. I'm, th I'm thinking of yeah, the one right. where it was the, we want to change town zoning near Four Corners, and we want to change uh, the... Um, the motorcycle. business district up on 68, those were both in the same... Yeah, that was the motorcycle 68. repair thing. Yeah. yeah, the motorcycle repair, yes. That's that what I'm looking at those. right now. Those were, th those were, those had recommendations from the planning board to my recollection. They didn't put them in the minutes. They just didn't put them in the minutes. Yep, That's right. They only put finance committee recommends favorably. That's it. Well, because as, as always, that's the requirement of Mass General Law that planning board, sorry, that finance committee make a recommendation on every warrant article. Now, to your point, Pete, it looks like the moderator asked Norm questions about it, and we expressed our, as the board expressed our thumbs up to that. So um, that's about as much as I could say based on what I'm seeing here for minutes. I mean, I, I don't have a problem, Norm, in. in uh, Making a motion to recommend favorably to the town. Yeah, and, and I'll take that little bit, and I so move. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm just before we go go any further. This is this is still a little bit ambiguous. I just happen to have something with yeah, me tonight. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> what do you want? I could have. Yeah. I could have Does, looked for something. Yeah, happen to have something for ninety two. Well, <laughs> it's a different project I'm working on. I, no, it's all good. Yeah, you know, this wasn't that long ago. Yeah. Come on, yeah. knock it off. There, there hasn't been that many zoning changes since ninety two. Really? This is this is just saying. It says Mr. Johnson stated that there was no opposition at the at the hearing. Uh, the planning board held, and the planning board favored the zoning change. It didn't say we made a favorable recommendation. I just I right, thought to say was, that I think you need to take some. Maybe John action. can answer this. So I thought with citizens' petitions, split, the split boards the stay out of it. It's split not just hands. ours, but any it's boards. Split. That's what I remember. I could be wrong. The only regulation with that is we cannot change the language of the article. We right, also right. cannot provide supporting documentation with the article. It can. That's up to the uh, the um, applicant to get up on the floor and, and speak to it. That's right. Okay, did I hear a motion? I did yes. make a motion to support, to recommend favor. And second. Oh, I second that. Second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes 5 to 0. I do think Thank Norman's you. an advantage for the town, so that's the reason why. Well, my, my other side of it is that I just don't like the idea of the plan of not making it work. Yeah. yeah. You know, it sounds like we're I just remember when Dave was here, and John, this isn't any reflection on you, but I thought at one time somebody had said something, and, and I, Dave's in my mind, that for citizens' petitions, boards and committees stay out of it. They can review it. In this case, because of zoning, we have to we have to hold a hearing by law. But I, I did I did come in to see if the board wanted to sponsor it, but it was actually easier just to do it as a citizens' petition rather than go through the whole process with John. Yeah, that's why we yeah. did it that way. Okay. okay. Well, thank, so you. thank you, gentlemen. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, Norm. Before we start this next public hearing, can I ask a question of Peter? Uh, I don't know. Not, he can't come through the door anymore because yeah. it's sealed. Well, I I emailed Peter the site plans for this next public hearing. To thank you, Peter. There we go. Thank you. Uh, oh yes, I'll put it up on better the than what I got. That's it. Uh, thank you, Peter. Okay, we next have a public hearing on the position of the applicant Scott Latour and the owner Philip uh, Raptus for a special permit pursuant to Mass General Law da -da -da -da. and as well as zoning bylaws for a motorcycle repair business and associated site improvements at the property identified as 191 Barry Paxton Road. It's also identified as parcel 012B1 and is located in the village centered zoning district. So, do we have the applicants here? Um, anything you'd like to present to us? The owner or the applicant? Either one. Yeah, he, Scott's here. I'm here. We're applying for the special permit for the. Uh, Motorcycle shop at my property at 191 Barry Paxton Road. Which? Okay. 
Okay, we also have a memo from John, I believe, regarding this. To that application, correct? Um, actually, I don't see the application at all. Well, that's the thing. Wasn't it's not in my online package. That's the reason I was mm -hmm. I was going to mooch off Dick. <laughs> I don't. I don't think the application is in our package. The actual application form. Well, Norm, I apologize, but I didn't realize physical copies of the application went in the packets. I didn't include them in the physical packet. This is the first time I put the packets together for the board for this meeting, so I didn't realize that physical <laughs> copies of the application were included in the in the packets okay. normally. Okay. I, I guess my first question is, have you determined that the application is complete? Um, it was. Um, the only thing that they are missing, because there's been some, if I can, if I can sum up, because the applicant was very brief, this was originally presented as an application for and at the pre-application meeting as a motorcycle repair shop in the existing building. Somewhere along the line, the scope has changed to include the proposed building you see on the plan. And from what I understand, more than just motorcycle repair to include any type of motor vehicle. So I was hoping that the applicant would explain in a little bit more detail what they're planning on doing with the property. The one item that they are missing from this application that for this building, for this new building, is they haven't included building elevation plans for the new building to show the height or what the building is going to look like. Yeah, and we've, and to the chair, we, the last time I remember we did that, that was with the, um, the car wash, we were asking for some some general details for anything like that. So, yeah. I would I would presume I'd want the same thing for this. Mm -hmm. That'd be that'd be my request since we've been through this once before. Uh, because what? Because obviously, whatever the use is going to be, I mean, there are two different types of special permitted uses in this zoning district. One would be small repair, small appliance repairs. The other one would be a service station. So depending on the scope of what they want to do, they're, they're somewhat different special permits, somewhat different uses. So that um, that is a um, pretty important detail. And with the intention of the district being neighborhood scale development, that would also make the review of this project potentially a little bit different. And John, from my perspective, just from the engineering standpoint, I like to see, you know, what's the building going to be used for? Is there going to be welders in it? So do I need three phase there? Where am I pulling the power from? Are poles going to have to go in? Is there going to be driveways? All that good stuff that we ask um, the previous applicant with the car wash or what we, what the expectations for the building was. And of course, that was all provided in a I don't want to call it detailed engineering, but basically sketches of what we were going to do so we could see the layout from a plot plan. And I'm not seeing... And I know the fire chief has questions depending on if they still intend to use the existing building. Yeah, see, I can't... I, I don't know where the drive is coming into this. From a plan review standpoint, for me, um, just in what I'm seeing and, and the, the very limited uh, briefing we got from the applicant, there's... there's there's not enough information here for me right now to really go in and ask questions that need to be asked. Yeah. Um, I don't really, I don't know that, I know that all the boxes are checked as far as a complete application may go, but this isn't enough information to really, unless somebody from your team or owner really wants to walk us through exactly, I can. you know, what you're proposing and, and an e in-depth explanation on what we're looking at, kind of what these facilities are going to be used for. That would be fantastic. Okay. Oh, yeah, I can do that would help that. out a lot. So. I'm Scott Latour. Um, I'm the owner of Latour's Twisted Spoke. We have a mass registered repair station. But we can work on anything. The proposed 40 by 60, I had submitted something, but I don't know where it is. It's a two-bay garage. In order to be um, accepted by the state of Massachusetts, you have to have a minimum of a 14 by 14 door 
and it had, can't be any smaller than 45 feet. So we are licensed to do commercial, non-commercial, and motorcycle inspections. So we also do, uh, I have the motorcycle side of it, and I also have, we do anything from machinery down to lawn mowers. So um, as I said, we are registered with the state of Massachusetts. Um, <clears throat> the new building would be, one bay of it would be specifically for commercial and non-commercial inspections. The state classifies one bay just for it. You cannot work out of it. It has to be set up specifically for inspections through the state. The other bay would be for uh, diesel repairs. Um, we do hydraulics, uh, basically anything that needs to be done. So um, I've been in Charlton for 14 years and haven't had any issues whatsoever. We submitted the, um, uh, through the local police department, we had no complaints against us in those, in those 14 years. Um, that's pretty much what it is. The front existing building would be for specifically the motorcycle shop and small engines. The back bay would be for uh, the bigger stuff. Machinery, track the trailers, uh, we do tires. Personal vehicles. Uh, is if, that If you came in for an oil change in your, in your pickup, that's where it would be done. And everything that we do, we dispose of it. I have companies that dispose of the oil and stuff. And... Um, we, I have safety That's all cages. licensed through the state, correct? That? That's all licensed through the yes. state and governed yes, by I, I do have a, a license for that, for the waste oil, so. On the existing building is, so on the existing structure that's there, you're going to be renovating that to a level so that it is correct. a motorcycle repair shop yep. solely, or are you also going to do any sort of, like, I mean, is it strictly for motorcycles? Is motorcycle, that? Motorcycle, anything from motorcycles down. Uh, snow, uh, snow wheels, snow blowers, lawn mowers, yeah. uh, anything. Because <clears throat> my intention would be to put a 10 by 10 garage door on the, would be the east side of the building with a new ramp. So that'd be uh, towards the back where it, wait, um, if you I'm see sorry, right I'm, there, where where's it, my north arrow? I don't see it. The very road goes like that, so it's going to be, I, I, know where you're, I know what you're talking about. The, that would be back side, right? Left, left hand side. Left hand yeah. side. Left hand side. Yeah. Where the, the left hand side, where the proposed parking is. Yeah, there would be a, a ramp there with a ten by tour, ten by ten garage door to drive in. There'd be uh, one one handicap spot and, and two uh, regular spots. On the existing on the existing building, are you going to have any sort of? Um, it's kind of a stupid question, but like retail or anything like that. Is it? Or it's just strictly a shop. Uh, it, it's minimal. We have. T-shirts and stuff. That's about it. Okay. So. And offices, obviously, and all yes. that stuff. Yeah. Okay. Um, doing cars. Uh, you said cars, but ATVs or side by sides, anything like that. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. Off, off road and stuff. In the yeah. main building, yes. Yeah. Yep. Not cars. Yeah. But go karts, side by sides, snowmobiles. The proposed building would be everything else. The what? Yeah. yeah that's... I guess through Norm, I didn't have a problem when I read this for the existing building doing all of that. It's just this proposed building. I, I, it just seems like I need more detail. Well, among, among other things, I'm, I don't know if you people are reading this along with me. This is Dave's mem uh, Dave yeah, memorandum. Memo. Yep, yep. And, and it seems to me he's, he's got some several, uh, what to me would be outstanding. Uh, yeah, it's this guy right here. Uh, points uh, on this whole thing. And yeah, so think, uh, what, is John saying that there's a special permit for? Like just opening the the, the main building. Um, well, there are two, two different. And then you're saying Tim, you have to apply for another for the bit. Tim, the hold on. Building? There are two, Tim, the two different uses here Sounds could conceivably be considered two distinct uses because let me open up my zoning bylaws to the village center district. As special permitted non-resident special permitted uses in the BC district. 
Um, 2B says gasoline and or service stations. But then there's another one, 2E, that is small appliance or re equipment repair, including but not limited to household appliances, lawnmowers, chainsaws, etc. So if the, if the board, you know, that's up to the board's interpretation. Um, if the board considers these to be, you know, two distinct things, two different special permits, um, or if the board thinks that this entire project can be included as one special permit. That's a logistics question. Yeah, I... Well, they're on the same road, there are there used to be multiple mechanics. I believe there's Mal's down the road as a mechanic, and for years down at the Four Corners, there was Carcraft doing mechanic work as well. So, I mean, the whole village center district is should be permitted to have this type of business, I believe. I do too. Well, can I ask a question? Yeah. My name's Mark Lavoie. I live at 211 Barry Paxton, uh, Unit 18, which is to the right of that facility. My concern is there's wells that service the 18 units uh, condominium complex there at Fox Run. Um, gasoline and oil, I I know you, you're uh, permanent and everything, but my concern is any contamination to the ground. Um, where the other machine, our car shop was, that was a, a super fun site at one point too. So we monitor for that to make sure that doesn't get into our wells. But I'm also worried about the noise. Um, I used to live up in the Laconia area in Bike Week and the Harleys opening up when they leave the shops. I know you can't control your customers, but that's what the people on my street are, are worried about is the noise of the motorcycles leaving. We didn't have any idea that there's another building going in for additional work. Because in the back of that is where our septic system is too. And there's a septic system for the building here as well on the far left. So I think one of the notes as well is a to back to the gas and, and oil is um, you know stormwater management plan specifically for this site, given volatility of things used, we would want to see that for sure to make sure that we're not going to have a runoff situation. Yeah, definitely. Sean McLaughlin, 175 Barry Paxton Road. Um, my concern is it's, it's being, it seems like it's being changed to industrial. And that's not what the Senate D Village District was set up for. Uh, you have tractor trailers. Right now, it's it looks terrible. Nothing against you. It looks terrible. There's a bunch of junk cars in the back. There's an oil truck in the back just sitting there. There's 15 tractor trailer boxes out there. There was almost three accidents uh, with a tractor because a tractor trailer was pulling in. It's just you know, motorcycle shops. One thing. I you know I don't have a problem with that, but with all this tractor trailers and now they're talking heavy equipment, it's not an industrial site. Um, diesel mechanic and everything that's that's totally different than what the center village district was set up for well and that's what I'm, I'm struggling with too is that I mean there's been car repair I, I get it there's been car repair up there mm -hmm. but 10 wheelers and cat diesel equipment excavators excavators I, I haven't that's not what the village center was designed for it was I mean, that's, again, that's my opinion. So that's why I'm struggling with, I need more detail than just proposed building. I mean, I know if you explained it, I get that. I just, I don't feel, I mean, I have, me personally, the motorcycle existing building, I'm on board with that. I'm, I'm good with that portion of it. It's just when you get to that back portion where I'm struggling, so... Um, if this is going to be one special permit, to me, this has to be an extension to this hearing to get more information. If they're going to be broken up into two special permits, then I wouldn't have an, 
me personally wouldn't have an issue on the board approving the motorcycle in the existing building. But beyond that, I can't go any further than that. Uh, my, my own preference would be that the, the whole project be taken as a single special permit. Uh, I just think, uh, looking at John's memo here, there's just an awful lot of issues that I think need to be need to be covered. That's true. And among other things, uh, I would definitely want to do a uh, site walk. Yeah. 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 I think a, we need to do that minimum. Uh, as a board. Um, and. I would actually propose the our next planning board meeting. John is going to be on vacation. Uh, I'm just going to suggest maybe it's a little bit early in the game here uh, that we continue the public hearing to the first meeting in May, and that beginning of that meeting be a site walk. Well, I agree. I think, I think it's a great idea. See what the applicant if they're if they're amenable to that. Can I get a copy of that memo? Do I have a basis to go by? Yeah, I don't see any reason why not. Yeah. Hey, right yeah, if, if one of you gentlemen wants to give your copy to the applicant right now, you can. If not, I can send it to him tomorrow. Yeah. Many offers here. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Would the uh, bay doors be on the front uh, facing the street no. for the diesel and the um, stuff? Oh. They, no, we just explained it's on the, it's on the, the, the left-hand side of the building. For the main the building. Front, the main building. But the other building you're building. Oh. Would be on, the two doors would be on the 40-foot side, not, not the long side. Uh, right, left? It would be on the left. Okay. So just another another item. And I think, John, it may be in that letter, just as far as what you're going to be paving and the scope of paving as, as, it, as it relates to the proposed building. If you're going to have doors on the left side, obviously you're going to have pavement going up to that. So I would just, just – small details like that. I know the engineer is probably trying to save you a little bit of money by doing details like that. But that's the stuff that we need to see as well to see what – you know, where you're going to actually be able to put um, – if, you know, if approved equipment, stuff like that. You know, people that drop their bikes off, I assume you'd lock those up, but – um, bikes in, in the building, in, yeah. Nothing goes outside. Yeah. Okay. So, or vehicles, or whatever it may be. You know, we need a plan for that, and shown on here what your entry and exits look like. Um, you know, and then we can talk about that at the site walk, as well. So, who's who's that commenting, please? That's me. Is that Britain? Yes. Okay. Thank you. I can only see the plan. I can't see any of you right now. So you guys are suggesting that we keep it as one single special permit, or? But that's my that's my preference. I don't know what the rest of the board thinks. I would agree with that. Just given the, I mean, it. it, it if they drop the building, then they, you know, we're still issuing that one permit. They could come back. There's nothing stopping them. But this is part of their full plan. Then I think we need to have it all under one. Yeah, I, I, I Britain, I'm with you. I, I'm okay with a full. Special permit if we're going to include the proposed building, um, but again, it, like you said, they want to drop it and just do the one. I'm fine with that too. Just yeah, because they can always, Tim, to your point, they can always, if as, depending on how the conversation goes going forward, they can always amend the scope of their plan during the public hearing. I just think we need to move the. I think we. Uh, I'd also <laughs> suggest that you meet with John sometime very soon. Uh, like I say, he's not here tonight because he was on jury duty today uh, to further discuss with him uh, what additional things that we might need. Well, what kind of, what kind of detail? What? Um, how much do you want to see in a stormwater report? Because they can. I've seen stormwater reports that are very thick and very detailed with. Tons of calculations. I mean, uh, could the board give some guidance as far as how much detail you're looking forward, you're looking for in a stormwater report? I've never seen a brief stormwater report. <laughs> I haven't either. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, no. Um, given the sensitivity of and and some of the public comments, I mean, I think it's imperative that we show how we're going to control. 
run off and, run off and situations yeah. that may happen, especially with gasoline, petroleum products being used, etc. So, and and I think we conservation conservation may have a quick. No, actually, conservation is nothing to say. Okay, all right, very good. Because yeah. well, they are far enough away from the wetlands. Right, right, right. No, no okay. jurisdictions, so, but. So obviously, obviously, that's a. Con I'm I'm going to have to have a conversation with the applicant's engineer as well because I know that Scott Latour had sent me computer generated renderings but they're not to level of detail of an of an elevation plan so i definitely i, I have been in contact with their engineer and the, he he did a great job of adding things to this plan so i can have a conversation i'll i'll, I'll have a conversation with the applicant but also have a conversation with the, the engineer um who did this plan to to get the level of detail that the board needs because that elevation of that building right now is higher than the con condominiums and where the well is. <clears throat> so water will is could, it come our way. Yeah. I just wanted to point it, out. It could, it could but, but no, no, if, I, if I may, just, just, just looking at the plan, um, it's the grading of the site. Add, adding a building, you know, basically there's already impervious, impervious area back there. So, um, I mean, the, the, the building is usually designed with, you know, a system of gutters or whatever to handle the water that falls on the roof. So I would make an argument that um, because of the site, adding this building will, will, you know, just in my non-scientific opinion, would not add a ton to the to the uh, impervious surface on the site. It's, uh, it's already pay, pretty much paved, hard packed dirt, which acts a lot like concrete anyway, or asphalt. So I, I would argue that it, it all depends on what the topography of the site will look like after construction. Okay, but, excuse me. Yep. Stormwater report is an absolute necessity for this project by the EPA. 100%. That is not a question. And if that means it's going to be detailed, it's going to be highly scientific, it's going to be long because there's no such thing as a short one as somebody else has already said. <laughs> that is that is a requirement of the town's stormwater permit. So to your point, Peter, um, that is something that the applicant and the owner need to think about coming out of this meeting is um, the expenditure, the cost of doing a stormwater report for this project. Right, and it's required because of the use of the property. Yeah. That's like oil yeah. water separators, etc., for runoff from parked vehicles. Of, all kinds of things going on yeah. there. Yep. It's it's intense to say the least. But through the chair, I had one yep. question for the applicant: that this existing building, it's just repair. Are you going to be selling bikes out of there? Uh, probably not. Okay. Not not at the, first, no. the only reason I was going down that is, as I keep looking at the the parking spaces, and there's two in a handicap for a customer-based business. That doesn't seem like a lot of spaces for people. Yeah, to park. most of the people drop off their bikes and leave. So. Okay, so cool. thanks, I appreciate it. So there's no bays on the right-hand side of the existing building or no. the no. proposed building. No, so it might have some sound blocking, it's blocking a it little is. bit. At least when they're working. It's a, major, it's a major highway. I mean, there's over, I don't know the exact numbers of the traffic that goes by there. I've done multiple plenty. studies sitting out there. And for me to control the noise, just the tractor trailers that are coming through the four-way and going down 122, I've got probably nine hours sitting there just recording with my decimal machine. What I'm proposing doing there isn't going to be any more noisy than 122 or the four corners. So... And the, which to norm the chair, your business hours are for that you, eight to five. Okay, so there'll be no repair or work during through the night shift. Yeah. Or none of that. Okay, that was a question. So what? So what oh, days I, of the week, Scott? Would that would that be Monday through Saturday? Monday through Friday till five, and then noontime on Saturdays. Okay. So I'm registered. Thank you for that. I just know. Only reason I ask it, Norm, is there's a diesel mechanic in in Sterling that works many shifts when he gets trucks in at night. So that's the reason I just, I want to make sure we were clear on that. Okay. Good. Um, I just got a quick question for Scott. Um, you know, in the, um, you know, obviously stuff's going to spill a little bit in the main building, but in the um, proposed building, are you going to do drainage 
in in the flooring for oil spills? Are you going to just do a flat floor? We have minimal spills. We have yeah. all high tech equipment. We have minimal spills. Yeah. So. Well, I'm just saying for if you're spraying the floor off or something, where's all the water going? Or if if you're not doing that, then it's a little different. But I don't know if that's no, we don't for cleanup and stuff. Yeah. We don't spray our floors. Okay. And then, um, I mean, there are, obviously, this sheet's got other stuff about all the trailers, which is kind of not Scott's issue, but the land owner's issue and just mm -hmm. where that's headed. I don't know if... Can I ask a question about that? Sure. Just having done multiple sessions just sitting out there and checking, how is it that two lots over, there's 10 buses and multiple unregistered vehicles that are commercial vehicles sitting over there, but yet at 191, that's being frowned upon. Because the active corner lot has buses leaving at 5 in the morning and coming back at 5, 6 o'clock at night, and there's 10 buses there. And the trailers that are at 191 Barry Paxson Road now are all registered insured. So I'm not understanding where the conflict is. And I have a video of it if you want to see it. I counted eight cars unregistered and ten buses actively leaving there before seven in the morning. What? I apologize. 191 is at uh, at the corner of. No, one no that's 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 217. Tim, he's talking about at the corner. Yeah. Tim, the buses are parked behind the old car craft. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. Right I know what you're talking about. Car craft. Yeah. And if we're talking craft. about sound, what you, what you said is if we're talking about sound discrepancies, that one bus was running for 20 minutes the other morning, and it was aimed towards the condos. So I don't understand how we're judging one parcel and not another. We don't have control over that parcel you're talking about. That's a building inspector and enforcement officer. We have no control over that. So I my, that. my suggestion is if there is problems like that, please get in touch with Dave McCray in the uh, building inspector's office. I haven't heard of any problems with sound from the buses leaving in the morning. I believe they go on um, Pleasantdale or when they leave and they when they come back, they might come off of Barry Paxton. All I was suggesting is we don't have enforcement rights. The planning board doesn't. We only have jurisdictions for permitting. And they're so, going to be building another new house right next to, to that on Pleasantdale. Okay. Hmm. Yeah. Any other questions, comments? Not across the street from the buses. Some po I got a, a letter this last week saying they were going to build and we were abutters, so. Oh, it's, it's on. So it'll be same size as the garage and the buses behind it's it. It's going to be on Pleasantdale. It's going to be on Pleasantdale, though. Right after the garages. Right after the garages, but on the same side as the garage. How many places okay. are there? Because the other side uh, has a 99, had a 99 year, no build. So yeah. <laughs> how the heck they get around that? Okay. Norm, do you need me to make a motion to extend? Or to continue the hearing? Continue the public hearing. Yeah, well, uh, one, one more time. Any other questions, comments? Are we able to move forward with the bike shop? With the existing building? No. That's a special permitted use that's part of this. Couple, couple more meetings, probably. Um, just for repair, the license for that, do you... Do you get the ability to sell cars or no, resale? If or you I was to sell used, I'd have to apply for a license. For another yeah. license. Okay. But there is a... Yeah, there's tiers for it. There's a new... There's a new... Follow up the auto, yeah, there's an auto sales place right next door. Two houses. Yeah. No, I know. I'm Maybe just curious. Two, believe, just right? curious what yeah. it is. Yeah. We just look at it. Two years ago, I think. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. Unless he wants to just do that one. Well, then this plan would have to be modified. We couldn't, we we couldn't send this forward with Correct. this plan. Right. Correct. So I'm not going to vote on a special mm -hmm. permit with a plan in front of me that doesn't reflect what I'm actually okay. going to put a special permit through. That's just mm -hmm. my opinion. Anything further? Um, do we want to see plans for the cutout 
or for all the work that's going to be done on the main building or just go by what building inspector will I, I deal think, with later? Well, you know, part of it certainly would be up to the building inspector, but I think the site walk is going to answer us a lot. Okay. We still like to see the details. Oh, well, yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. and that, that's, that's for them to work out with John and the engineers. So does the board so the board wants to see obviously building elevations for the proposed building, but the existing building, I mean, it's they're not changing the height or the dimensions of that building. They're just reusing the existing building. No, we don't need exi yeah, don't need the existing building. I don't need anything. Yeah. That. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean you've anything, laid out anything, yeah. anything within those walls needs to yeah. obviously we go through the building inspector. But Correct. my question is on the parking and access for That's emergency was, vehicles for fire department, et cetera, we should have them. That should be if they're gonna well, I guess it depends on the applicant and how they want to proceed. If they want to proceed with exactly. just the existing one story and the bike shop and and X the proposed building, then it it does simplify the That's process fine. and and make it. I want to use the word faster, but it <laughs> seems to be a little bit more straightforward with the proposed building and extension. That I believe that you know that just it's up to you how how you want to proceed. Well, if we so can move forward, the bike shop that would be fine. Just have to get an updated drawing for the next meeting. Then that's it, I guess. Mm -hmm. We can review yeah. it, close the hearing, and then. Decide on the special permit. I'd still rather wait until the second well, I know, part of the first meeting in May. Well, that's what I mean, but we'd still want to do a site walk, correct? I think so, yes. Yeah. Um, just an FYI, there's three weeks between meetings, so the next meeting wouldn't be until May 14th. Yes. Isn't that, isn't that election? Uh, Monday. Monday is the election. Monday, yeah. Okay. okay. You would have to pay a couple second time for all the permits for the other building too, if that's okay with you. Yeah, um, down the road or well, the engineering drawing updates too. Mm -hmm. This would have to be pulled and just go with that standard drawing mm -hmm. as part of because this drawing will be included in the package if I'm not mistaken. The special permit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So. So what would the board want to see if the applicant chose to remove the proposed building and just go with the motorcycle shop in the existing building? Um, would the board still need to see a stormwater report? I don't. Is, is it going to be paved all the way back to the proposed building or is it just going to be to those parking spaces? <coughs> parking spaces. Me. Excuse me, the change of use requires a stormwater report. Period. Whether it's motorcycle or anything else. Exactly correct. The change of use makes it industrial according to the stormwater standards. But it says it's a commercial building now. It, it's becoming an industrial according to the stormwater standards. You say that the EPA will see it that way, even though our bylaws don't state yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Oh, we, we stated it's commercial, but the way that the EPA is going to see this is an industrial site for repairs, etc. And that's you can have your engineer just double check. I mean, and, and go through that, and then see what the what the requirements of the state are, and if that's something. You know, if you're not building new, and I'm sorry, okay, um, I didn't mean to. Um, if you're not building new, it is a little bit more tolerable as far as what he's going to have to present a little bit, but not. A whole lot, so still a heavy document. So I have a question: are, are, you, are you changing it to industrial? That no, 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 no. It's just for the EPA no, no, definition no. of store of the stormwater requirements. They're going to require it as though it's an industrial site. Right. They're, it's not being changed to an industrial zone. Oh, it's okay. not. No. It's, it's nothing wondering. to do with industrial as oh. far as ta of town of Rutland. For anything on our end, it doesn't change. It, but that's strictly in their definition, the EPA's definition of an industrial site. Correct. So, I did I just because I'm looking at this up close? This says gas. Is there existing propane there now, or is that going to be added? There's, there's existing propane in the main building, yes. All right, so that gas and electric are in the back then. Is that what you put in? Yes, sir. 
Okay. So, so coming out of this, Tim, if I could, um, the applicant should have a conversation. The applicant notice should have a conversation and have a conversation with their engineer in terms of what it would take to put together a stormwater report. And they may, you know, think about the cost of putting together a stormwater report and whether that, whether or not that is a uh, make or break uh, aspect of this project for them. Yeah. Because it's not an inexpensive project, I wouldn't think. It's a little better if you have an existing building and you're not performing a lot of construction. But again, correct, it is still not a tiny document, generally speaking. No, it's not. There's a lot of calculations that have to go into it. <sighs> yeah. Okay, Nick. I just was trying to read these little letters where it said, well, gas and electric. Yeah. I didn't have a magnifying glass. Now, don't you wish Route 49 went by like it was supposed to have and gone all the way to New Hampshire and make it so much easy for you just to heck with this, go to New Hampshire, and heck with DEP. Dick, you were just waiting for that opening, weren't you? He's been sitting on it. <laughs> it's called 149 Bypass, baby. <laughs> so, um, I guess, and again, I'll motion to continue the hearing. Motion to continue the hearing. Second to May 14th at 6:30. To May 14th at 6:30. Yeah, that's what I think it is. With a with a, uh, with a site visit to be held prior to the meeting. Correct. May. That will be that will be posted separately. Yeah. Uh, we have not done it that way in the past. We've actually done it as part of our meeting. Yep. We adjourn okay. to the site visit and come back and and then so we basically open our meeting up as a site visit. Right. So are you going to start the meeting at 6.30 at the site, or are you going to go to the site at 6 and plan to be back here for 6.30? Uh, I Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, I, I, I think, cause so, so we'll post this a meeting at 6 o'clock at the site. And, okay, so I'm, I'm kind of wondering, how, I'm going to have to figure out how to post that with two different locations. But So that's the intent, is to start out at the site at 6 o'clock, and once that's concluded, return to the library for the remainder of the meeting. Is everybody available that early? At six, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm looking with, with, with notice, yeah. I mean, do you all have to go at the same time? Or? Yeah. You said it's uh, three weeks. I've, yeah, I've done this. We want this. It's three weeks to the next meeting, you, mm -hmm. yeah. you said? Yeah. So well, I'm, I'm that's not. plenty of time to... Well, it's you know, it's, it's three weeks. For, it's, it's three weeks from the next meeting to the first meeting in May, is what Tamika was saying. We are, we're just talking about the site walk prior to that May fourteenth meeting. Correct. Yeah, on the same yeah. day. On the same day, though. Yeah, we, on the we same get, day. So I'll yes. drive back here. No, there's three weeks. Okay. Because if we're all on site, we have to open. It's it's. It's, at it's, that a point, it's a public, public hearing, public meeting, and yeah. we got you, in this state. You got to check all those boxes, and everybody's got to know about it, and they got to know that we're all on site. I know what you're saying because everybody could just go. I've been in that them. position where I just like, can you guys just walk the site? But unfortunately, at yeah. your convenience is what I'm saying. Like you have three. Weeks it has to be a public. Yeah, yeah it's got to be legit. Okay, more than two. Oh, it's yeah, open so meeting law that. violation, and mm -hmm. we end right. up. Uh, I'm not okay, so the continuation, Tim, would be to May 14th at 6 p.m. on the site. Correct. To return to the regular meeting thereafter at the public library. Yeah, we typically have just said we uh, adjourn from the adjourn. site meeting and return to um, the regular meeting. Yep, the planning board meeting okay. in the uh, okay. select board room. Okay. Okay, I've heard a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So, we'll Thank see you on the news again. And then, ladies. Yep. Thank you. And hopefully, keep the rain away, please. Yeah. <laughs> Why did I do that? <sighs> Peter, could you take the plans down, please? Yeah. <laughs> Can I get the restore? Thank you. Okay. Next item is active subdivisions. Uh, <laughs> which I visited uh, Brenton Old Rice oh, and Bear Hill 2 and Hilltop 
And other than a couple of foundations, there ain't nothing going on. Mm. Oh, I, I got I got John a little wound up because I did drive through Bryce Lemon, the phase off of 122A, and right at the beginning, the asphalt was collapsing from a large pothole. And then when you drove in, there were sides that were starting to go down. So John's got uh, – got, uh, Kevin. Kevin, thanks. Mr. Quinn had no other to take a look at it. Yeah. I just was fearful and, knowing that the under base is well, there's, there's, getting yeah, washed. There's, there's getting some washed crazing even in, in the center. Okay. Uh, I saw uh, the cracks yeah. started to worry me because I'm yeah. going like, yeah. after what we dealt with over on, yeah. no, the uh, the two, I call them rock, rock, rock house, you know, off of 56, the two Lenny. Subdivisions oh, yeah. with those roads cracking and, and caving in, I do not want that to happen at Bryce Lemon. Yeah, because it was washout. I'm, ex I'm expecting Kevin to get out there sometime this week because when Tim emailed me about that, that was the morning of the snowstorm. Oh yeah, last yeah. week. So It'll be I, I haven't heard anything. I have been checking my emails yesterday and today. Kevin hasn't responded yet, but he said when weather permits, he will get out there. So I'm thinking he'll probably get out there sometime this week. Yeah, this week's a good week to get out. He'll get out. Yeah. It definitely looks like there's some deterioration, like even on the main part of the roadway. Yeah, yeah. and I, I haven't it's had a chance going to drive around to the other side. I'm, that was going to be my next sweep to see how that's holding up. The other side, the other side of Bryce Lemon. It, it looked better. Yeah, that that's all done. Okay. Yeah. Other than Lindsay. Circle. Yeah. Line. All right. Which are in there working. They were working on it. In yeah. The, oh, yeah. So. yeah. But there's no road building going on. No. I was kind of surprised. Bring all the states. Nothing. Yeah. Uh, they've, got, they've dug out for where apparently the roadway is going to go. So there's two feet of water in it. <laughs> <laughs> he, Norm, did you see if they had the excavators, I think, finishing up a couple houses in Bryce Lemon towards yeah. the front? I saw them back there put, starting to put foundations in. I'm like, mm -hmm. that's getting almost built out. Point, there's no more space left. Because, actually, right now, he has very, very little available. And there's no, but no, what, nothing on that hill on the state either. Yeah. Other than the fact that this last storm took, took down a huge pine tree you know, right at the beginning of it. Yeah. So. All right. So that's that. Uh, correspondence none. Uh, town planner report. Yeah, so the only thing I have, Norm, is the, um, the next agenda on the 23rd. Obviously, I'm not going to be here in the board is going to have that be a business meeting. We did have an approval not required plan come in late last week that will be on the next agenda. I will take a look at that tomorrow and process that. So that's going to be it, just a business meeting and an A&R an plan. Um, okay. if, if I may, John, don't isn't there also the public hearing for the Interview Road Citizens Petition? Oh, yes. Thank you, Tamika. Yes, yes, because that citizen petition came in too late to put onto this agenda, so there would be the public hearing for that other rezoning that Mr. Elbag wants to do. Whoa. Any chance we get it? I don't remember seeing that. Is that... It's, what, the Kappa property? Yes. Yeah, it was It was actually previously approved at a town meeting, but never added to the zoning map, so yet something else that was previously approved, but not Kappa? added in. On Intervale? Yeah. Yes. 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 It's, it's, between, it's, be, it's the property between the two properties that are currently zoned light industrial office up there. Yeah. There are two, two parcels that are industrial. There's a little piece right in between. Yeah. That's residential. It wants to change that to industrial. Well, it already was changed. It just wasn't well, added to the It already map. was, correct. Oh, okay. But there's, um, Anita can't find evidence that it, it never got sent to the Attorney General's office. So this is this is a housekeeping item more than anything. So it's expired then, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's why it has to go back to town meeting. It has to go back to town meeting. Yes. Ah, Kappa. Oh, okay. what a nice name. <laughs> I'm assuming it was a good. great guy. <coughs> the big so will this be, ball. John, will this be another... Um, it might be way house way of, like uh, we just did. Towards. It's a I'm a, petition, Tim. What do you mean, Tim? It's a citizen's petition. Yeah. Yes, it's another. It's another citizen's petition by Mr. Elbag. 
I got to say something to the board about so, this. But this might be old imagery. I'm about up to here with circumventing all of the bylaw subcommittees and, and zoning by doing citizens' petitions. I, I'm oh, but there's not much you can do about that, Tim. I mean, it is a legal mechanism and to get on to get on the uh, correct the town meeting. Warrant. We don't have to support it. That's one way of saying it. No, you don't have to. No, nope, that's right. You don't have to. That, that's why I'm just go. I mean, this steps. is the third or fourth one that's come through, and I'm getting to. A point They're going to keep coming. Oh, exactly. Because now we're now we're issuing decisions saying we support it. Yep. So now it's we've empowered people to do that. I know, and that's. Well, that's a good point. So we're giving, we're adding fuel to a fire we don't want. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> potentially, yes, potentially. Oh, well, for sure. <laughs> Take advantage of, yeah. So okay. I, I take my vote back for. <laughs> no. No, no, no. <laughs> well. Uh, next agenda item public comment. Any from the. Anyone yes. The public? After I uh, kind of blew my cool, um, you know, being quite loud at that last meeting there um, about Glenwood Road and Glenwood Place and all that, uh, not only did I receive thank Anita very much, mm -hmm. special town meeting November 19th, 2018. I went back through my pile of minutes and come to find out I wasn't around the minutes and, and also the special town meeting. I did not, I did not realize or remember or that it went before and got voted. Oh, and I, I have to have to apologize that yeah. I, I was. I had a knee operation and and, and went to, the freaking thing went to smithereens and I couldn't get around at all. So okay. I didn't come to the meetings. I didn't go to this one here. Didn't know it. And I thank Anita for sending it to me. And that's what I was asking about if that was what was sent to you oh. from John. Okay. He handed that to you. Yeah. So now, and I also feel that it was done not right because... The houses that were there originally should have been Glenwood Place or Glenwood Road and Glenwood Place or whatever the heck do you want to call it should have been the other road that Elbag just changed the names from Williams property that went to town of Princeton. <laughs> and uh, instead of being that one in Glenwood. But uh, so anyways, I... I uh, Apologize for getting hot-headed, but there again, that's me. Now, <laughs> now you're ready for hothead stuff. Uh -oh. All right, you're ready. Are you? I am uh, quite ticked off. A number one because of the master plan. We haven't done a blooming thing about it for crying out loud. Back in November, you said we have three weeks. Read it. I read it. Did things. We were going to have special meetings and everything else. Nothing. Nothing is. And I know what you guys are doing is trying to, hey, get the hell out of the planning board no, and we'll no, just no, no. sign it off. Well, no, I said, Dick, Dick, what's ha what's I gave it. I realized that I after gave talking it, to CMRPC that. Basically, we can't move forward with the master plan because we don't have one of the key elements to it, which is the open space part. We still need, what, we still need to do it, but that's not the point. I gave it to Janet anyways, and I'm waiting back from Dominique to get my master plan back with all the things in it. And I am going to say here, I am not leaving this organization. I'm staying, and I want meetings. I don't care. I don't want the town administrator who can come on and say his name is Scott. I'm, I'm getting just so frustrated, for crying out loud. I want this planning board to have a say in this thing. Sit around. That's how you guys learn. That's how you do it. That's how we stay, try to update Go through the damn thing. It doesn't have to be not the tail end of it. So anyways, Dick, to Janet's your, gonna get it back to me one way or another. To your point, John, when are you back from vacation? The first week of May? 
Yes. Uh, actually, the 30th. 30th. Set something. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me make sure before I before I get committed, because I've, I've still got my notes for what you and I were supposed to talk about with John sitting in my in my file. Let me see that. Um, like May uh, that Monday, May 6th. Mm-hmm. Right now, I don't. I mean, I've got a gas leadership call, but they're just going to tell me that uh, whatever. So, if we want to do something, I don't know what your Mondays are like to sit with John and go through all the comments and get this thing knocked out. Sure. I mean, unfortunately, I mean, I could even do Friday the third if that's convenient. Well, that's right. You guys aren't in on Fridays. Um. Thursday the second, I'm available too. We want to set something in the morning because I'm with Dick. I got we've got to sit down and go through the comments because I've got a bunch of them. I know Dick's got a bunch of them, and we got to get these incorporated into this master plan. And is there any movement? Oh, I'm sorry, but no, on, yeah, on, the, on the uh, John, is there any movement on this open space? Because last, I mean, last I thing be, I found. Oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Last thing I found out, Tim, is they're they're putting together a final draft, and once I get my hands on that, I can send it to CMRPC to Trish Settles to see if um, they can at least add the goals and objectives portion of that plan into the master plan. And that, from what I understand, that would suffice to satisfy that portion for now. Did you get a firm commitment? Because I know when Norm and I sat on it, we kept hearing they're going to get to it. They're going to get to it. They're going to get to it. No, I, I, I've, been, I've reached out I don't and think they ever... said they're finalizing things, but I don't. I've got to. I've got to check back in with them. It's been a couple of weeks. Okay, that's it for me. I'm sorry, Brent. Working very, very hard on it. Yeah. I just have a high level question in regards to um, um, some of the, just what I'm hearing because I think a lot of this was before I was here on the board. So, Dick, so they put together this master plan. And then they said, hey, look at it, review it as a planning board. Some of it, obviously before my time, but you had put together notes and you said, or you reviewed it in depth, put together comments, concerns, and then they just didn't encapsulate any of that? No. Is that how? No. No, that's. The master plan was generated uh, with the help of CMIPC and a master plan steering committee, which was made up of about eight people. Yeah, about eight people. Okay. uh, Myself, you were on it, Tim. Too. Yeah, I was on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And can't even remember now. Who else? Leah was on it. Yeah, um, yeah Leah was on it, definitely. And, so, some and, and together, we put together this master plan. Uh, you, know, you know, they they did the, I don't call it electronic editing. Scene, okay. Scene, the they format, did the heavy lifting. Formatting and all that. The fun stuff, stuff right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and they then presented it to us, uh, and then it's up to us to... Review it okay. as a planning board and see okay. if it's correct, if things need to be changed or whatever. And okay, I misunderstood. I thought they weren't taking any of our input for some reason. No, I thought, no. okay, I did. Okay, I misunderstood. I apologize. Yeah, okay. the, like I say, the, the open space portion has been definitely a hold up on this thing. And it's, you know, if you're missing one part that you have to have, that kind of Throws a whole thing out. Well, yeah, kind of I got you. Whole okay. thing out and, and Britain Dick had a lot of good. They they did an executive summary at the end, and and to Dick's point, there was a lot of grammatical mistakes within it, and he did a phenomenal job of going through and correcting a lot of that. But in the end, there was a on their executive summary, there was a lot of comments, and Dick went through them, and then I went through Dick's comments and added my comments, and. There was a lot of similarity with, like, this doesn't make sense. And that's what Dick and John and I were supposed to sit down and try to weed out so we could get that back to CMRPC. It. And it was on me. I we had, They had a date set, and I, unfortunately, had some illness issues and couldn't make it to that meeting. Okay. So that was on me. That's why I wanted to try to get this back on track and get these done. But um, there is comments that are pretty significant in that executive summary that okay. need to be addressed. Okay. No, I appreciate the explanation. I was just wondering high level, like how that was shaping out. So appreciate it. Thank you. It's, it's clear. I have a question. If I may. Yes. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yep. Yeah, you broke up a little bit. So I'm confused because I, okay, sorry. Um, 
I have a question, Leah Whiteman, 280s County Road. Um, when we were uh, when we were doing master plan, they were aware that open space was going to come later, and that CMRPC had said that that was totally fine. Um, I know open space. We're meeting nonstop. We have another meeting tomorrow night scheduled um, to fight to try to finalize everything. But I'm just kind of confused why CMRPC had told us that as master plan that it, that piece was fine to come later, and now suddenly it's a holdup. That's a good question, Leah, because this was a a meeting that Austin and I had with Trish, Janet, and also the transportation uh, planning director probably about a month to five weeks ago at this point. And we brought up the master plan. And I mentioned the comments that Dick and Tim had put forward in finalizing those. And that's when Trish brought up the aspect of open space and basically told us that we cannot submit the master plan for endorsement or adoption officially because open space and recreation is one of the key elements and they at least need because they at least need some goals and objectives under the executive summary at the end under that table. So, yeah, I'm I don't know. Again, I'm new to this. I'm new to this um, master plan coming at the end here. But, yeah, that's that's what we were told at a meeting in Austin's office. They changed okay, that's fine. I, I, I will communicate that tomorrow. I'm, I don't know if the rest of the group knows that or not i imagine maybe i i don't know for sure it's the kind of the first i've officially heard of it i've heard you know the shot's been fired kind of in random meetings um and finger pointing but i was on master plan and open space and distinctly remember um master plan being told that as long you know that open space it was fine that because it was coming that it was not going to be an issue so I'll follow up tomorrow. Yeah, and I had, I had emailed Melissa, um, I think a few weeks ago, and she said that they were approaching a final draft and that we could potentially have something soon, which would, would potentially satisfy what CMRPC was looking for, which would be great. So, yeah, there's, yeah, I don't, obviously, I don't know any of the conversations that happened before. I just, I just know what CMRPC told us. So, it's it's there seems to be some confusion going on as far as you know what <laughs> what what needs to be provided to actually get the master plan finalized enough for submission to the state or cmrpc okay. rather okay no thank you for the clarification okay anything else and I think yeah, the stuff you guys wrote down, John gave me a copy, and it, it's it's pretty good stuff. You know, it's um, – and going forward, if all of a sudden they hand it back to you and now we got to do something, I guess the ball's in our court. So whenever you guys do attack that, you know, if it's going to be in the next month, you guys will be, will be ready to go, of course. I would expect after we get done with the meeting with John, there'd be like a summary of everything that was agreed upon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, changes. And then that should be presented to the board. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's my yeah. thought. Okay. And then, and the good thing is that once this is completed and finalized, and I, I think the minimum is that CMRPC wants to see from what I was told um, that it doesn't have to be a full open space and recreation section at this point. They're saying that as long as we have some goals and objectives added to the table at the back of the document, that that would satisfy them. So, um, you know, I reached out to Melissa at the time shortly after that meeting to see if um, they had something. And she and she basically assured me that they're very, very close and they're formulating a final draft. So it, it seems to be close and we're right on the cusp of being able to add that to satisfy what CMRPC is looking for, at least. Okay. Right. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to close the meeting. 810. A second motion. Do I have any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Oh, I have a question about the, the 191 Barry um, Packs. You, when I moved oh, the in, public hearing is closed on that. Yeah, well, I, but, that's and that's why I wanted to make sure everything was closed. Um, we we can't comment on it. It's it's nope. it's a public hearing. We can't give you any feedback. You can say something, but we can't give you any feedback. Me, when I moved in, 
uh, 211 Barry Paxson three years ago. There were two tractor trailer trucks there and the daycare center was in operation. Today, there's over half a dozen tractor trailer trucks. They're going in and coming out weekly. And what has changed that allows that to happen? Who would, who would enforce the requirements of that property? What, what did the building commissioner approve of use? Yeah, the building commissioner. Let me just add, the building commissioner is, is already aware of that. He's been notified by another resident, um, so that is already on his radar. I, I don't know the status of it, but it has been brought to his attention. All depends just who's so living know. where. And I would ask him about it. Call him and ask him. Okay. That's, I just wanted a, a person to go to go see. That's the guy. He's the enforcement officer for the uh, town of Rutland. Okay. When it comes to zoning issues. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night.